Oh my god! She is a fucking producer. Oh, off. I can't. Oh my god. This is where this reaction ends. I'm back. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucin. I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer person, and today I'm going to be reacting to Melly Martinez's brand new album. This is Portals. So let's go. Yes! Okay, so Melanie's back with a brand new project. As you know on this channel, I have really, really enjoyed getting to know Melanie Martinez. And this new song, Death, that she put out a couple of weeks ago, I'm obsessed with. I just love the sound that she's going for this time around. It's such a brilliant way to like start a new era. I'm so excited to dig into that because her artistry is unlike no other. But I've got a question for you. That song at the beginning, uh, did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Oh wow, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's my song, Man. Make sure to check it out. You can stream it on Spotify. You can also watch the music video in the corner. Yeah, support me with all my music. Thanks. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, if this is a new video for you, then make sure to subscribe. Make sure to give it a like, make sure to comment to help it in the algorithm. Also, um, if you're a long-term viewer of the channel and you want to support me even further, you can do on Patreon, where there are a bunch of different ben benefits, including being part of the exclusive Discord community, where we all chat about um, our favorite music and uh, give each other recommendations. And it's a lovely little place over there. So yeah, cool. Okay, I'm ready. I said that with some determination. Oh, I'm very excited for this. Portals, let's go. Okay, so the song number one is Death. So let's listen to it for context and so we can see how it leads on. Is death, is life. You can check out my original reaction to death. I'll link it for you. And it will be at the end of this video as well. And the music video. I heard this big heartbeat and was like, oh, it's like the heartbeat of a giant. Kind of thinking maybe that might give us a hint as to where we're going to go with the movie. Carving my name in the grave again. I've been listening to this so much this week. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Back from the dead. You aren't around. I sink into the ground. I love that this opening section is actually really, like, deceptive, you know, of where the song's actually gonna go. Immortal by design time. Back from the dead, back from the dead. I love this song, it's so good. <laughs> I'm back from the dead, back from the dead. I'm back. Oh, it just goes off, doesn't it? I love it. Dead. I love that. Oh. It's just so well produced, the song. And to know that she produced it herself, she's just a real visionary, but she's like honed her craft. Back from the dead, back from the dead. Um, back from the dead, back from the dead. It's so cool. It, it's taking like a little bit of like death metal. It's Melanie crossed with something a bit more metal and the like really, 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 really like heavily compressed and distorted drums. Should we wait around for the transition, just quickly? Oh, so that sh 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 goes straight into Void. That's really cool. Yeah. Death is a brilliant song. It's so well written. It's so well produced. It really sets the tone for what Melanie's going to do in terms of her sound, but also, like, in terms of her story as an artist. She's killing off Crybaby. Off she goes and she's starting something brand new. It's like, what better way to reintroduce yourself after, you know, however many years since the last project than to actually literally bury your old body in the ground and like rise from the dead as a new creature, as this new piece of artistry. That is just what I really get from Melanie is artistry. She is just like, has such a unique vision and is not afraid to enact that and actually has the fan base that will support her creativity wherever she goes. It's just like the dream, really. This is basically like my dream is to be able to be an artist in that sense where I get to just make the music I want. And she's doing it. She's out there doing it. She's paving the way. If you want to see my first reaction to death and my reaction to the death music video as well, make sure to check those out. Yeah. 
Next song, this is Void. This song has been out for a couple of days, but I purposely avoided listening to it. Uh, Void, it listened to it. So that I could react to it as part of this album reaction. So let's go. So it's like a harp, which is very different vibe to the shushing. In the void. In the void. Into the light. Okay. Ooh, okay. Love those drums. And I love it slightly like the music is slightly out of tune. It's like There's rotten things left in me. There's rotten things left in me. Okay. Okay. So there's a solitary feeling here. Those drums are so well produced. <laughs> I just love how they just like punch through. It's really pulling me through this song. Okay. Oh. So the void itself is holding the loaded gun. Wow. Tangled in my own intestines. Oh my god, Melanie. <laughs> Oh, wow. Only Manly Martinez can pull off a lyric like that. Just the texture in this production is so sick. It's like, you can feel it. I'm obsessed with those drums. Sorry, I can't get over the drums. <laughs> so it feels like she's really pulling apart, like, her psyche and realising that there's a kind of dark void like within herself I think like threatening to like swallow her up I mean we'll look at the lyrics after someone tell me if this is hell wow I've got to escape the void there is no other choice right okay yeah okay I love that lyric so much like there's this feeling of being trapped, of being isolated, of being tangled within the remains of your own body. That is so visceral <laughs> and so like claustrophobic and gory. It's oh my god. As if who else would come up with a lyric tangled in my own intestines? Like that's fucking amazing. Oh. That was really cool. I loved the sound of it too. There's like a kind of like belying kind of simplicity to it, you know, in the sense that it's, I think it's it's almost like maybe like the humdrum threatening to take over your mind. It's that feeling that like, I think a lot of us felt during lockdown, it almost feels like you're doing anything you can to avoid the void. <laughs> I need to outrun my own thoughts because if I don't do anything, then I'll just get like, I'll just spiral. The music, the, the, dun, dun, the relentless pace of it, it kind of feels like something that's chasing you, trying to catch up, but it's something that is the humdrum, something that is the repetition, you know, but it's still very insistent. Like, there's something very, very, very clever about that. Also, let's, like, think from death, her body is dead, her body's, like, decaying, but she's actually still trying to get away from her old self because she's still tangled within that body. Let's look at the lyrics in full. Baby, I'm spinning around the corner. It's tasting kind of lonely and my mind wants to control me. Yeah, so that's kind of the sense of, like, being overwhelmed by your own thoughts, right? There's rotten things left in me injected by society no one here but me to judge me that's like trauma and expectations that she feels like uh put upon her by the trappings of society a lot of that we explore during k-12 you know stuff like eating disorders like and body image and things like that pipe down with the noise i cannot bear my sorrow i hate who i was before i fear i won't live to see the day tomorrow the theme of reinvention is really really key here isn't it like a priest behind conviction walls i judge myself kneeling on a metal grater bloody like a body that has died and it's myself tangled in my own intestines i've got to escape the void there's no other choice i like all the kind of like the religious imagery here there's there's kind of linking it to heaven and hell linking it to those kinds of things as well oh actually rebirth reinvention it is very christian in that sense right it's almost easter as well maybe that oh my god maybe that's the point maybe that's why she's releasing it around this time when's good friday next friday right shit She's going to put something out on Good Friday. Oh my God, I'm seeing it all together. The Easter story within Christianity is that Jesus died and came back to life on Good Friday, right? Yes, rebirth, raising from the dead. I'm back from the dead, I'm back from the dead. And she's releasing this fucking album around Easter. All of these things. Oh my God, I can't believe she's doing... Oh my God, okay. Oh shit, 
complicated, sorry. I'm like really like, oh my God, my fickle insecurities and turn them into beauty, alchemize the dark within me. It's almost like the process of making this album maybe is what she's hoping is going to be able to reinvent her. And she needs to reinvent because the trauma from childhood and her earlier life is threatening to overtake her and to overrun her. That's really, really, really clever. Okay, before we get completely, completely lost, let's go on to the next song. The next one is Tunnel Vision. Okay. Okay, follow the tunnel into the portal. I love the creepiness of this music, but also slight kind of hymn-like feeling. Oh my God. Okay, nice. This is almost like a reimagined version of one of the K-12 productions. The theme for this album so far is drums. <laughs> I love the kind of like almost like heavenly sounding, you know, uh, yeah, I'm in the world. Cool. Nice. I love the use of the strings, like very cinematic strings, right? Eyes on the prize. Tunnel vision. Okay, maybe it's like, it seems to be like referencing maybe, like maybe a boy having tunnel vision about sex. More than that, yeah. I love the use of reverb on that. Oh, that's so sick. Oh my God, that sound. Oh my God, the production is insane. Okay, interesting end section. I love this. I love the way that she's like treating her voice in this album. It's like really giving it so much character. Oh yeah. This sounds like the alien in the garden, you know? Okay, that was a builder to the next song. Okay, cool. Interesting. I loved how that song became something totally different and to get taken into the world a bit more. I think that's what the production in that song particularly seemed to be doing was like more world building, which I really appreciated because it kind of felt like at one point we were in like this kind of heavenly garden. You know, there's a lot of like foliage, there's mushrooms and stuff, sunflowers growing out of her head. Like she's this fairy creature within this magical garden. And that that's what the kind of song there was painting a picture of slightly more for me. Art, cinema, music, Melanie. <laughs> Let's have a look at the lyrics. So, follow the tunnel into the portal. Lay your burdens to rest. Drink from the fountain, death's holy water. Maybe the portal is representing this garden utopia where she can remake herself. And it's also kind of representing like the tunnel towards heaven. I make them panic, it's satanic how I bend my body. Yeah, you can look, but you can't touch. I'm not just anybody caught in the haze and hypnotized. And you're too thirsty. Open your view and you will find. Stop searching. So, there seems to be like, like sexualization of her. I make them panic at satanic, like the way in which she shows her body is somehow making people panic. Do you know what I mean? Like, eyes on the prize, thought the cherry would be, right, better than the pie. Oh my God, clever. So she's talked about these kinds of themes before, but it feels like she's tackling it with a much more like adult perspective. Playing house to distract me, but you're no good at acting. Oh, I love that, so good. Obvious what you're after and I'm more than that. So it's about somebody who's getting with her, dating her, playing house, pretending to be in a relationship, but actually all they're after is sex. That's their tunnel vision, is sex with her. But she is more than just an object. In Void, she was talking about escaping the trauma and the things that society's put on her. And this is very much one of those things. Over-sexualization of women in media has affected women IRL and affected Melanie in this particular relationship where she's just treated as a sexual object and nothing more. And this is one of the bits of trauma that she's unpicking. I'm thinking that this is where the album's going to go. Maybe song by song, she's going to kind of like pick apart the trauma of her childhood, you know, 
of Crybaby. They always hustle for the pussy. Okay, she's really laying it out for us now. Could have been more, now we'll never know. So she's left this person and that's maybe like she's shedding the dead weight, getting rid of the toxicity in her life one thing at a time. And this boy is the first one of those things. Presumably a guy, I'm going to assume, just based on the context. Let's have a look at the next song. This is Fairy Soiree. I love that. I love it. I already love it. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, this is cute. I love this. This is like a very different rhythm and tempo for Melanie. Kind of has a little bit of like a Latin American flair to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's definitely giving me a bit of Rosalia. Especially in that drum and clap production. This is really sending me. I really like this. I'm breathing the pheromones again. I love the kind of idea of it being a soiree like a party and the song being quite dancey. I love her vocal delivery in this as well, it's very gentle. Oh, that's it. Oh no, it's not! <laughs> okay. I love the vocal stuff. This is bad. I've been the boys and the girls and everyone in between. Oh my god, it's like water. Oh, a light shower is next. Oh my god, I was literally thinking like, is someone got in the shower? Oh my god, mental, amazing sound design. I'm obsessed with how I went from this dance into this like ballad. It was like, actually it was two different kinds of dance really, wasn't it? Because it was like more of an up-tempo Latin American dance. And then that actual poet bit was actually, I think it was in 3-4. So maybe it's more of a waltz. You know, maybe that's the idea two different parties i can't wait to dig into the lyrics of that but like before production <laughs> she is a fucking producer and i'm obsessed with it her vision for her production is just insanely beautiful incredible world building and really so surprising but also like musically so tight like gives you that catchy pop thing as well she's really balancing those two things in her production so amazingly well and i'm so excited because like as much as like i appreciated seeing her artistry in the first two albums i do think that like the child like thing was holding her back it felt like it was boxing her off slightly and it feels like now her creativity is just completely unbridled it's really exciting and lyrically so complex and so deep as well it really feels like this is like a growing up moment for her artistry you know let's look at the lyrics the blue stars running down my forehead cold wings flutter while they're moving real kind of beautiful imagery it's almost like a angelic imagery and also the angelic thing links to the heaven and hell links to the religion you know all those kinds of things this fairy is like trapping somebody this next one lips of sugar i'm breathing the pheromones again hands are tied and miranda writes don't mean nothing this character who is like a siren like a mermaid siren you know luring people towards their depths and in entrapping them led me astray to the fairy soiree alone alone and now i want to run with the magic lose sight of gravity and home i'm not sure how this relates to her growth but it's definitely like like world building and imagery building. I think that's kind of maybe the point of this song. Ooh. Somewhere on Venus, they're searching for me. So Venus representing the woman, right? Venus. Aphrodite lady see shell bikini. Art pop fans, shout out in the comments. Stomach, stop. Yes, and I think she's very obviously keying into that like traditional imagery of the ideal woman, right? And I think she's undercutting that. Someone Venus, they're searching for me. They think I should be this woman, right? gender expectations on me while i'm covered in muck from earth to the sea she's actually covered in the trauma of the real earth and is not in that place of like traditional femininity gather me all of we everyone i've been the boys and the girls and everyone in between so maybe she's talking about the way in which she sees her own gender i'm not sure yeah she's certainly saying i don't subscribe to traditional female roles this must be part of the untangling of the expectations and the trauma that are put on her next song <laughs> this is light shower that guitar's giving me very like red hot chili peppers vibes So much imagery of her pushing through muck, through earth, through dirt. Mm. Gorgeous. Cleanse me. 
like she's found someone. She's hoping maybe they're gonna help her reform herself, you know. This has really given me like coming of age album, but like in a way that only many Martinez can do it, you know. I like this like slightly more stripped back moment in terms of like the album progression. The first time she's kind of looking towards somebody else for help, I think. Maybe she's admitting that she can't do it all by herself. Maybe this is a therapist. Plan out my last days on earth, you. you made me want to plan out my last days on earth. So it actually sounds, I think maybe more that she's fallen in love and she's finding hope in that. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh what does that sound? Oh, God. Oh, sorry, that's really... Oh, God, I'm really sensitive to stuff like that. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't hear the end of that. <laughs> oh, it's because it's a fucking spider. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. Lol. This is something I've realised recently, is that I'm actually really sensitive to sounds like that, especially ones that are, like, insecty. It's something that me and my boyfriend noticed recently. We were in an art gallery, and there was, like some visual thing with like kind of insecty sounds i was like nope and i was like out the other door i could not cope with it's like it just gets in your ear I'm really really sensitive to that no oh, like <laughs> chills up my fucking spine um after such a like lovely <laughs> song that was just really stripped back and just her and her guitar she just then puts on the end just to freak me out um <laughs> i do love how it flows though as an album it's like every song leads into the next one in an interesting way you know i liked that one felt like something more grounded let's look at the lyrics you are the light i've been searching for forever feels like man i've really never felt the rain that's gorgeous i love that buried in the desert didn't think i pushed through the dirt you cleansed me like a waterfall you came but this is like maybe more like romantic sex. I'm screaming like a kettle on a stove. You cranked the heat up, I was cold. I'm not used to all this water love, it's true, but you make me want to plan out my last days on earth eating you. I th it's sex. It's sex. Beautiful, romantic, intimate sex giving me the orgasm that I never knew I needed, that I never knew could be possible. And she felt like she's being cleansed but of course there's imagery about being eaten you know we talk about eating out right and but she's talking into like you know obviously Melly Martinez version which is like <laughs> so good you're what I'm missing in my life as bright as sun give me your vitamin D <laughs> amazing oh she's so fucking clever I love her having like the most amazing sex give me that vitamin D it's like the sunshine it's like and I love how she's like linking it the sunshine the weather the rain the showers you know you're a shower of light I devour any day of the week baby cleanse me beautiful and then she fucks it all up with that horrible sample at the end <laughs> like what an incredible way to describe like having beautiful intimate romantic sex and it actually for the first time being sex that actually makes you feel like you're special her sexual experiences up to that point have been all just you know the tunnel vision kind of guys and now she's realizing what it's like to have actual good sex you know next song this is spiderweb Ooh, plucking harps beautiful we're back in that angelic garden aren't we the garden of eden maybe okay okay oh stop it I love this imagery of her like floating on the wind, not in control of her own destiny. Oh, fuck off. I can't. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Like, oh my God, it's so stressful. <laughs> oh God, it sends a fucking chill up my spine. I think there's like a bug on me or something. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Very clever music production if she's making me take my fucking headphones off because I'm so freaked out. Oh, cool. Oh, this is genius, though. It's like itsy bitsy spider. There's a nursery rhyme element to it. Oh, it's like a beatboxer. Okay, I'm so stressed. I'm really worried about what's gonna happen. It's really well produced, though. <laughs> I love this bit, this is so clever. No idea what she's talking about in this song because I haven't been able to listen to the lyrics. <laughs> they die in the pit of the spiderweb. 
Okay, now we're in the forest. What's going on? Leeches around. Leeches is what's going on in the jungle. Um, yeah, okay, great, cool. This is where this reaction ends. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I explained that to you just before that song started. I bet you, like, we're watching this thinking, oh, dear. Oh, no. Dad's going to freak the fuck out. <laughs> if you've watched my channel, you know I'm just a very sensitive person in general. And my ears are not an exception to that. But I must say, it's incredibly well produced. Especially that breakdown bit with the dum ba dum ba dum It's really giving me Litsy Bitsy Spider, which is so clever. I can't believe she's kind of referencing that. It's, uh, she's just a fucking genius. Like, honestly, she's great. I move like a moth or a butterfly, craving a change in the wind. I swirl by all the insects and all the flies, watching the cycle they're in. So obviously she's building up the imagery of insects, bugs, but like she doesn't have control over where she's going because she's just riding the wind. Like the winds maybe being society, maybe it's the industry. Better off dead than wasting my hours, flying where I shouldn't be, flexing like pricks with their stolen power. They're just who the spider will eat. I think it might be the spider is the music industry and she feels as if she doesn't have control. Roll. Spinning all your silk and moving all of your eight legs to build a web that will spread through the world, feeding off our highs and lows and curious to see the struggle. So there's a sense of like, if you get into the industry, the music industry, you know, under a record label, there are people who are gonna make money off of your experience, off of your artistry, off of your highs and your lows. Big bite, they liquefy the insides first. Up all night, bound to their addiction to it. Lifeless eyes, they die in the pit of the spider web. Oh, I'm getting another vibe though. It might be a social media reference, like in the addiction in getting stuck in it and actually you being taken advantage of. Let me know what you think this song is about. It's definitely keying into another key trauma that she's trying to unpick, I think. I might just be pushing all of these things into my theory that I came up with early on, but you know, I'm feeling it. I think this might be where it's going. I just need a biscuit. This is the biscuit channel where I review biscuits. This is the one that's got wrapping on it and this is like one with a hole in it i've had them both before and they're nice <laughs> let's go into the next song this is leeches oh i like that caught in the river of the tears that i cry more mention of the garden of the forest the jungle i love that skipping of that beat I just love where this is going. It's so ominous. Wow. Oh, good. <laughs> so good. They really want you in their piss-covered gaze. Wow. She's really not afraid to go there with the lyrics this time around, is she? Actually, let's be honest. She's never been afraid to go there. <laughs> I love the intensity of this song. It's kind of like a bit beguiling in the way that it's quite subtle, but then builds to a really big place. Ooh, the end there, it sounds like somebody's trapped, doesn't it? This biscuit is so good. I couldn't really make out a lot of the lyrics in that one. I enjoyed the way that it was kind of like, like kind of subtly built and became extremely ominous and kind of had a real level of like, what lies beneath the surface, the, the the fear, the anticipation, and that little end section with somebody bashing on the door, fight, like trying to get out, really kind of broke that tension in a really brilliant way. It was very like visceral. I feel like maybe the first two albums for me showed a lot of potential, but I feel like this album brings it to such a new level of artistry for her. I think that like that is really like what the album's about as well, you know? like on a kind of macro level as well. It's about reinvention. It's about, oh, it's a coming of age album. Leeches surrounded, conscience is throbbing. They can't sleep at night, hold their pillows. I'm actually getting itchy. <laughs> Caught in the river of tears that I cried. Bountiful harvest, they flock to my garden. It's almost like the leeches themselves are attracted to the trauma that she's been through. You know, they're caught in the river of tears. 
How much blood can you draw with your claws from a flesh that's not yours? Maybe she's talking about the trauma that was specifically inflicted on her by one other person and how like the leeches are like the dark thoughts that have come to feed on that trauma. They don't think too hard about your fragile heart. They eat off the table that you set so you starve. Well, they find any way just to make you stay right from where they want you in their piss covered games. Oh my God, that's so good. Isn't it? Maybe the politicians are the, le are the leeches like... And maybe that's where she's going with this song is actually like the way in which politicians set up their agenda to actually like prey on your insecurities, feed your insecurities and then create a mob. That's kind of what happened in Trump's America. And maybe that's what she's referencing here. I'm not sure. There's different levels to what that could be. Let me know what you think. Let's go to the next song. This is Battle of the Larynx. It'll be about singing, her voice being heard. I like the phaser on that guitar. You used all your words for a quick game Cursive, I'm poignant, assertive I'll smile as you fall to your feet Well Yeah, while they're chasing While I'm steady pacing Earth. I'm really interested by some of the musical choices in this Oh, okay <laughs> Like, in some places, it feels like she's musically referencing late 90s, early noughties rock, which is not what I expected, if I'm honest. Okay, I really like this one. Like, the melody and the chords are really beautiful. They're, like, the combination. I like the way that the vocal almost kind of, like, slows it down. It's like, it's like slurred, isn't it, in a way? Guitar production is really taking this song to a different place. A more grounded place, really. Oh! Oh! Drum production! She's just so sick at her drums. So inspiring as well to hear an artist who uses drums and percussion and sampling in a way that is so different and unique. Like, that's something that I love to play with in my music too. with my larynx it's like maybe the battle of the larynx is an argument i thought at the end of every song we're like where are we going now Ooh, wind storm the winds of change <laughs> there's footsteps Ooh. in a bar wow that transition oh my god i feel like i'm in a world Amazing. Oh my god, what an incredible transition. So cinematic. I can't wait. Cannot wait for the movie whenever the fuck that happens. Cry. I really thought it was going to come out the same day as the album, but apparently it's not. Apparently it's going to be like next year. I just love a sense of cinema within pop music. It can take you to another place. And I think that is like what is so beautiful about Melanie's music is this sense of escapism, but not escapism as in like doing like glitzy dance pop, but escapism as in taking you to another world, taking you to her world, which is this like incredibly beautiful rich and sometimes dark and scary place like you can lose yourself within it I think that's like something so special about this that one like it was like you're walking through like a storm and you've walked into like a club or something and suddenly there's all these people in a bar like having drinks and stuff around you it's like really back down to earth isn't it let's look at the lyrics falling asleep by the arcade liquor it jumps off your tongue you used all your words for a quick game, blew it up before you won. Interesting, using your words for a game, we're in the arcade, your words are your currency and you're blowing it all off. I speak in cursive, I'm poignant, assertive, there's musical chairs in my teeth. She's almost criticising another person's, like, ability to debate. They talk without thinking, they bark while they're shaking with teeth that are round and dull. So it's almost like saying like these people who maybe threatened her in the past don't threaten her anymore because she's realised that they're all bark and no bite. That's literally what she's saying. How stupid, selfish, baby, don't you battle with my larynx tonight. I'll wreck you if you chase me, but I'll be silent till you cross the line. So she's holding it back. She's almost like putting on her battle armour and saying, you know, my armour, my protection is my words and my ability to form an argument and to actually, like, say, no, bitch. <laughs> you know, call your guys into the dive bar. They'll give you validation your daddy could never bestow on you. Oh, my God. <laughs> she's savage. Really cool. I can really relate to that as well. There are many people out there who are like very ego driven and very like just speak, speak, speak and everybody just listens to them. But they're actually talking shit. And I feel like a sense of kind of quiet power in the fact that I think about 
what I want to say and you know I actually have like deeper thoughts than that I kind of have this kind of quiet confidence within me and I think that's kind of what she's that's what I'm taking from that song as well it's like I've got more to offer than just surface level ego oh! <laughs> let's go on to the next song cool okay next song this is The Contortionist we're in the club into a club I'm thinking like members club that's more vibe can we not I love the plucked string arrangement. You can tell them what you wanted to. Cool. Oh, this is fierce. I really like this. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of like she's being pushed to insanity. Imagery is pretty amazing. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I'm done being like moved around by you, controlled by you, into ways my body that aren't supposed to go. Yeah. Oh. 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 God, this is actually really... Oh, I'm sorry, but that's too much. <laughs> okay. I love that sound. It sounds like a UFO descending. Okay. I appreciate her incredible artistry, and I like that she's an artist who is doing this gross stuff, but I'm not going to be able to listen to that song. Like, it's too... Like, I can't listen to it. I actually got neck ache from cringing. <laughs> Yeah, it's such a brilliant song. And like, and I do think that like the cracking of bones and everything really adds to the storytelling, but I just, like, I really can't listen to it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Um, let's try and think about this song. Um, I loved the instrumentation. I love the plucked orchestral kind of thing. That seems to be quite a key part of the album is this like almost like angelic harp orchestral reference like the angels sound their clouds kind of sound but like being brought down to hell you know that vibe and that one really sold that for me like conceptually it works incredibly well like to do a song called the contortionist which is about her contorting her own body to fit somebody else's ideals and her bones snapping in the process it is actually genius i just just it, i just can't <laughs> Twisted all my limbs for you, two of them in knots, two of them in hoops. I don't want a bruise for you, holding back my words until my face is blue. Ha. Bones are crushing, bones are crushing, pushing me, bodies touching, bodies touching, loving me, blood is pumping, pulling me, feeling nothing, fucking me. Oh my god, amazing, so powerful. Done doing back bends, I break and snap, it's no fun, no fun. Push myself into a box while you hold out a gun, I'm done. So it seems as if, like, more imagery of her, like, breaking out of this box that's been created for her by society. Maybe that's been created around her artistry and being able to, you know, push out of that expectation. That seems to be like such a key theme. And this is really like actually really linking it back to the first song. Twisting my bones like screws, stretching my self-worth like you usually do. Wow, it's like you're controlling me and turning down my self-worth. Got me like a bad tattoo always under skin, even when it gets removed. <laughs> Maybe it is the trauma of a past relationship, like a really toxic relationship, and now she's trying to undo all that damage. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is Moon Cycle. I love the sound of that. It sounds like a koto or a banjo or something, but I really affect it. Oh, that's what the moon cycle, yeah, okay. I love the sensitivity in this song. Nice. I am my moon cycle. Wow. Okay, so I feel like she's really at this point where she feels quite confident to be able to say, I'm on my period, fucking deal with it, you know? Maybe there's an idea of like, cleanse. You know, cleansing her trauma through her period, you know. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. I love the drums. Like the soft kind of...
Nice. Oh. Oh, something scuttling. The end of every song leads to the next one. Gorgeous. Musically as well works really well. That one was really beautiful. There was something really tender and something really sensitive about the way that she approached that song. The way that she sings sing it was like she was divulging a secret and that she was being quite vulnerable with us. It seems to be revolving around like she's referring her period to her moon cycle and just talk about how it's a natural part of her, you know. It's really beautiful. Production, drums, fierce, again, every single song. She almost like took a trap hi-hat, but instead of having it with like really hard attack, it was like with the soft ones, I, was, I loved it. I really, really loved the drum production on that. Why are you always acting so serious? I said, baby boy, you know I'm on my period. Yeah. <laughs> Say he doesn't care that he's into this. It happens every time a new season hits. She's on her period and she's having sex and he is not worried about it. Are shedding any lessons making room for blessings? Juice melting like raspberry pomegranate. How scary how my aura got him howling at my moon cycle, baby. Oh, I love that. That's actually so wonderful. And actually talking about how this guy is even turned on by her natural womanhood. And it's like reframing periods, which is so taboo in our society, which is so ridiculous because it is like literally a key foundation of creating life. <laughs> periods are weaponized against women. You know, even now she's reframing the period as something beautiful, something natural. It's a cleansing, it's this idea of rebirth, like shedding away the trauma, the lessons that you've told yourself and starting anew, starting afresh. I love how she's using this metaphor of a period happening every month and to tie into the overall metaphor of the album, which is rebirth. Beautiful absolutely beautiful and I love that she's doing it because I think more people need to reframe the period in 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 a much more beautiful natural way because it is that you know but I'm all cramped up pain like a blade on the front lawn but I don't give a fuck because I'm so strong so she's pushing through the period cramps it's empowering win a fight on my period in matter of fact right now I could build a pyramid you ain't messing with my cycle that's dangerous so she's talking about how her moon cycle her period is empowering I think it's so good I think it's really wonderful. I actually love that so much. Next song, this is The end of that song, what the fuck? Amazing, 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 amazing. I think that's my favourite song on the album so far. I just love 
where it was going musically, where it's going production wise, where it seems to be taking us emotionally. And that ending was so sick. It was just like completely went off the rails into something totally different and ended up having this like amazing drum breakdown. Oh my God, so amazing. Actually obsessed. I really want to know what that song was talking about. Call me your nymph, a sprite or an elf you can cry to then use. So she's bringing back this character. She's really bringing in the visuals of this nymph fairy-like character that we've seen throughout all of the art. I will not suffer, cry under covers, I'm not your mother. There's something really empowering about this character that she's created. It's nymphology, not psychology. Be a manic pixie dream girl that you fucking ought to be. The manic pixie dream girl trope try and categorize women into something simple it's like objectifying them and simplifying them throughout this whole album she's been a victim of this attitude and victim of this patriarchy but she's now fighting against it standing in her power and saying i'm not just this woman of what you've decided I'm going to be. I'm this nymph, this beautiful creature, and I'm going to fight against you. You can't even spell, but you're an expert in nymphology. And then she spells it out for them. Hilarious. Flutter my wings while I pout. Push your penis in your mouth. I'll make you choke on your doubt. Cut you off once you die. Just a fairy with a knife. Maybe it's like she's seeing toxic traits within her current boyfriend and actually saying, nope, none of this. You need to sort of like check yourself before you wreck yourself, before I wreck you, before I cut your dick off and stuff it in your mouth. <laughs> okay, part two, amulet. Diamonds and rubies, the star in all the movies, wears me out, big pockets. I am a favourite locket, keeps them drooling. Her finding empowerment in these shiny objects, like, and that metaphor. Okay, let's go on to the penultimate song. This is Evil. Again, more referencing this rock era. It's like a mixture between this kind of rock, metal, and angelic, symphonic stuff. And this felt like bliss. I love what they've done to her voice here. I really think the last few songs have been so, so good. In songs in their own right. Yes! This is probably the closest she's come to doing something that sounds like a pop song. This is actually taking me more to like a early noughties pop rock place. Fierce. This is so good. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, come on. I really love the sense of empowerment that the end of this album is bringing. She's like, I'm not going to stand and defend you in front of all my friends anymore. Like, you are your own person. The drums, again, so tight. If you bite my hand again, I will never feed you. You can call me Eva, just go ahead. I love the kind of gang vocal thing of this as well. It's like, everybody come together. Love it. I love that. That was like the moment where it felt like it was all really coming together. And it felt like she was bringing everybody along her journey in that song of empowerment. We've had a lot of female empowerment in pop over the last like couple of decades, really. But no one does it quite like Melanie. She's a true artist and is not afraid to express things in exactly the way that she wants to. Firing on all cylinders and creating a work of art that is just so, so uniquely her and so special. And it feels like it's coming together in these last few songs. You called me the other day, I stayed away. I left your shit on, re on red four times today. <laughs> Used to miss your kiss, now I'm hop, skip, jumping over narcissists. So it really does feel like now she's managed to work through all this trauma and come out of it a much more empowered person to the point where things don't get her down that used to get her down. Said it's all in my head, all in my head, whenever I spoke my truth, no, I won't defend you to all my friends, this time I refuse. I don't know whether it's to this uh, current boyfriend because it's quite scathing, shit. Um, <laughs> but she's really kind of saying, you know, actually there's all these times that you actually pushed me down when I was just speaking my truth and now I feel like empowered to just go no fuck you if you're gonna act the fool then you act the fool I'm not gonna defend you anymore it took me way too long to put this to bed loving you was lethal 
guess that makes me evil. Oh, so I, I think this must be about a previous boyfriend. She's kind of like saying, I don't give a shit what you say about me anymore. Really feels like she's really coming of age throughout this album, which makes so much sense in terms of like the track history of her artistry, you know, crybaby, the child growing up, going through the trauma of adolescence and then breaking free and growing up. Hope you never cope, hope you slip on soap. <laughs> Crack your head like an egg. Want to see the yolk? You are such a hoax. She's really like getting it out of her system, you know, cleansing herself. And that's so key to this whole album is this idea of cleansing. Before we go on to the final song, here's a shout out to my patrons. So all of these guys are supporting me over on Patreon. Their names are all appearing on the screen now. One of their benefits is to get their name in the video and I've started putting it in this section and I'm talking slowly because now there are loads of them. <laughs> Welcome to all my new patrons. If you want to join me on Patreon, you can do. There is a community of music lovers over there called The Crying Club. We have an exclusive Discord server where we all chat about our favourite music on the different tiers. You can then also get all my videos unedited and you can get them early as well. And if you want to go into the upper tiers, you can request songs from me one per month or you can request an artist reaction from me or you can request a full album from me as well. So there's all the different tiers going up. If you want to check out all the prices and everything, click on the link on the screen or in the description to go through to the Patreon and check that out and support me in my journey to becoming a full-time artist, person, who talks about music. <laughs> and if you're new to the channel and you're liking this video so far, make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave a comment and make sure to like it. All those kinds of bits of engagement really help it in the algorithm. So if you want to support me and support the video, that's another way to do so. Let's go on to this final song. I am so astonished by, the, uh, the, by this album. I think it's wonderful. I'm excited to see where she's going to end it. The last song is called Womb. Rebirth, right? Oh, amazing. Okay, something falling out of the heavens and landing on the ground. We're underwater. Oh, nice acoustic. Motherhood, right? Birth. Mm, yeah. Conversations in the cosmos. Oh, yeah. Ah. All these last few songs have really gone off. Oh, yeah. Love it. Oh my God. I love this. This is so good. It's so well produced as well. Oh. This chorus is just so good. The drum production has come through this entire album. No more. <laughs> I love that guitar riff as well. Oh, ah, oh, the cycle is complete. No way. And I bet if you were to listen to it from the top, it would just seamlessly go back. <laughs> Amazing. I've, I was just thinking like, how is she going to end this? But of course, she made the cycle complete, the cycle of life, the cycle of birth by ending the album how it began. Phenomenal. Like her artistry is really, really, really come to a head with this album and I am flattened by how well this album has been put together. I can see everything she's trying to do and I am totally, totally inspired by it. It's wonderful. That last song really went off. I really just enjoyed the rhythm of it and the kind of pop side of it. That like goes for the last few songs actually. Before that point I was thinking not many of these songs apart from Death really kind of went off in a way that could be considered pop. I feel like they weren't quite as hooky as like some of the songs in her earlier albums. But like the last three songs really rectified that for me. Before I do the final kind of album wrap up, let's look at the lyrics. A seed in mother and I chose that space for me. I'm undercover as they wait for joy. And I know my brother, he'll make the journey later on. Oh, so she's like writing a song from the perspective of herself being a child in the womb of her mother. And it's all a game now, but once I'm in the world, it's lost, memory's gone to evolve. It's like she's kind of got in the head of her fetus and is creating this song, knowing what the future's gonna be, but knowing that she's not gonna be able to remember it as soon as she's born. It's like this idea that as a fetus, you're pure. And it's like, 
only the world that kind of ruins you. Oh my God, this is working on so many levels, I love it. Cut the cord, and oh, so the cord from the music video, that's key, right? Finally birthed, she's finally free. She's become this new human that she wanted to be at the beginning, but she was still tangled in her all of her intestines, but now she's found a way to break it out and to be birthed as this new human being. But now she is wise of the traumas of the world and she can go into this new life that she's created for herself, fresh, but also having learnt the way forward. It's wonderful. Oh my God, this whole album, it's just pure artistry, like pure artistry. I think it must have come from the core of this idea of her wanting to start fresh and then it all kind of coming from there, rebirth, the cycle of life and death, getting through trauma and finding power and confidence in learning from the past and becoming a new person. It is, works on so many levels. And I love that this new person she's become is represented by this character, this nymph that is like a shield, you know, and it's that confidence in her weirdness and confidence in her own vision that actually gives her confidence in herself and enables her to be able to actually kind of push down the naysayers, push back the patriarchy and actually just live as her authentic self without guilt. It's like astonishing. I've never heard anything like it. I cannot wait for the movie. Obviously, I will be reacting to it in full, but I cannot wait to see the visual side of this new level of artistry that she's reached. It's astonishing and wonderful and I love it. I'm totally inspired, even though I am a bit freaked out still by those sounds. Lol, I'm just a sensitive boy. <laughs> Watch my reaction to the deluxe songs on Patreon now. The links are on the screen for you. Cool, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Bye.